Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Bonnie Doesn't. Today, we're in windy West Texas. Windy as hell, we're getting blown around every which goddamn way, and we're hanging out on the side of the road like a couple of jadrules. Okay, just loitering here. But I want to take a minute to show you a cactus that's quite remarkable in its form. And this would be Epithelantha micromeris. You could see it blends in so perfectly with that limestone rock, okay? But you see those bright red fruits, those bright red swollen ovaries, the adaptive benefit in that, them being that color, of course, is that they'll get noticed by the birds and the rodents, which will eat the flesh and poop out the little uh, black seeds or just scatter the little black seeds. The seeds on this cactus look like little black poppy seeds. Let's get up close, took a little money shot at that, those spines, there you go. So this is pretty interesting because these spines are not just uh, serving the purposes of defense, okay, of poking anything that would want to eat them, okay? They're not just serving the purpose of protecting that uh, epidermal photosynthetic tissue down there from the harsh ultraviolet uh, radiation of this barren sun-exposed desert. They're also helping this plant blend in with the limestone rock on which it occurs. And many cacti do this. So cactus spines are not just for the fence, okay? They serve multiple purposes. Cactus spines can serve multiple purposes. And you see this especially when you get to the, uh, the high Andes, where a lot of cactus spines have been modified into almost hair-like uh, structures, okay? Protecting the uh, apical meristem of the cactus from frost, from ultraviolet radiation, which again is much more intense at 15,000 feet than it is at the 2,000 feet. But uh, anyway, how long do you think it took for this to evolve? You know, all it takes is uh, that mutation evolving uh, once or twice proves to be beneficial. All the ones that don't have that mutation get spotted on the limestone, get picked off by the by the herbivores, whether it's ungulates or whether it's swine. And then the ones, the, the plants, the individuals that have that mutation, that can blend in very well, get left alone and left to a sire more progeny. But you could see, I mean, this thing, we wouldn't have even notice this had we not uh, had we not stopped. Looks like a coyote found a nice place to ship. Maybe the coyotes are spreading the seeds too. Look at this over here. I can't even see him. Look, there's one. There's another one. Look at this. Where do you other one? Look at this. Look at it. You got a nice little colony here. Look at all those little bastards hanging out. Look at like little sea urchins coming up on a limestone. How many millions of years of evolution did this take? You know, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of cacti that do this, that do the whole uh, phytomimicry thing, the whole, uh, you know, uh, camouflage. There's a lot of cacti that practice crypsis. The only time you'll see this plant uh, is it is on, you know, limestone rock, okay? Um, negligible topsoil, negligible topsoil. Just basically pure limestone here. We're just growing on the limestone. The limestone talus. I can't even see this fucking guy. There, he, there we go. Look at that. Look at that guy. Look, he's like, he's like 10 millimeters across. And incredible to think how many people, I mean, thank God they do. Thank God they don't notice it. But how many people just blaze by this, you know, at 70 miles per hour, thinking there's just, uh, there's nothing going on here. It's just dry desert scrub. It's just sitting there doing nothing. Look, you got 20 plants right in this little frame alone. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that I, maybe, okay, you got 60, whatever. You got, a, you got a fucking lot of them. Always, always, always pays off to stop and take a closer look. Oh, look, this guy's got some new growth lately. See, see, you can see some green, green down there. Those spines are a little bit more separated than, 
than the ones next to him. So he's actively, he's actively dividing. Like little golf balls, little sea urchins. I did one other episode on this. It was in a, in New Mexico, same habitat, Chihuahua Desert Limestone. And it's, this guy was just, you know, popping up everywhere. I mean, it's like, it is, it's like botanical where's Waldo. You got to look really hard to see him. measurement you could see most of some of these plants they're about 20 millimeters 20 millimeters in uh, diameter and there's so many there's just there's hundreds of them so they're all breeding here they're banging they're producing fruit and then they're just self-seeding creating a little rock garden one of many little rock gardens in wonderful West Texas you brick Just coming up uh, beneath this little shrubby, uh, not even shrubby, it's a scrubby mimosoid. Legume family, mimosa subfamily, with the little pea fruits. Nice little caleandra. Nice little mimosa. Look at it, do so good. They do so good together. You do so good. You do so nice. Go check out that Fizeri over there. Nice brassica, nice member of the mustard family. Note the scales. Note the scales on those, uh, the texture of that stem and those leaves. Fizeri is a rather large genus. You get some really interesting ones. You get some uh, very interesting ones speciating on some very strange substrate. Okay, they grow on limestone. I've seen them on volcanic ash. I've seen them on serpentine. Four petals, like all brassicas. And you got six stamens in there, if you can actually see them. Six stamens in a central green style, looking like a little bulb. And it'll be on RottenRatBastards.com. Okay, it'll also be on my other show, this, look at this fucking guy.com. Look at this fucking guy. You look good on the limestone there, oh yeah. Let's look, at, let's look close at the fruits on this Fizeria. Okay, so a lot of brassicas, a lot of mustards have what's called a silique. It looks like a little legume pod, okay? Splits open along two seams, okay? Not so with Fizeria. Fizeria has what are called silicles, okay? Common name for them is bladder pod. That's why a lot of, a lot of these uh, get called, uh, you know, the, the common name is bladder pod. They got a real interesting one you'll see in uh, southern Utah sometimes. Forms these, it literally looks like little... Uh, Little air-filled uh, bubbles, the little air-filled pods. Those are the fruits. So you can see you got a that uh, that silical is a superior ovary. It's above the point of attachment of the sepals. The petals have already fallen off. Flowers mature from the bottom up, so the oldest flowers are on the bottom. That's a racine. Okay, race to the top. Okay, they're still blooming up, still blooming up top. Look at look at that orange pigmentation on a vasculature. Of each one of those four petals. Okay. Just could pop that little bit. You still got the style on there too. See the little style, little rad poking up from that green bubble. You can see they're they're doing rather well for themselves right here on a limestone road cut. A little cactus right here. I can't even tell what it is. It's not epithelium. It might be a man. Little tubercles. Too too small to tell. And cover him back up with his racks. Look, here's another fine example of Crypsis and Cacti. Using those spines to hide. You can see the spines on this guy are much uh, thicker. With almost no central spines. Just radial spines. No central spines. But you got the tubercles in there. 
You got the prominent tubercles tapped by the aerials. Looks like you got a nice, look at all the trichomes in the apex. See all those hairs? Wonder what it's like when he flowers. Probably looks pretty good. Yeah, see, look, there's another individual of that same species, but this one has central spines. But you could see the lower, the little lower aerials do not. So they might just get, uh, they might just get the central spines when they get older. Somebody's hacked this, guys. They can identify what species is what, even without flowers. I mean, the level of Asperger syndrome, no offense to any Asperger's, uh, you know, uh, havers, however you say it. Uh, you know, but uh, the level of Asperger's you must have to be able to notice such minute difference. I mean, I, I can't even do that. And I stare at plants all day. Cacti can be really hard. But again, we got the, the mimicry. We got the crypsis. Excellent camouflage right there. Oh, you know, and then, uh, of course, further, further up the road cut, the epithelanthid just disappears. You don't see none of them. Cacti are like that sometimes. They'll be in the right habitat where it looks like they should be there, but they're not. And who knows why? You know who knows why? Gad. Only Gad knows why. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Keeping it short, nice, brief. Don't gotta sit here too long, you know? I got a short attention span too. That's all I got for you today. From a beautiful gray, overcast day in windy West Texas. Go fuck yourself, bye.